And now I want to show one case, very typical case that has to do with the use of myconized material in a formulation. And this is also translate to a very common customer complaint. This is a real case. I'm, I'm not sure the numbers are, are the same, but, but uh, I, I made the numbers simple, but the, the case is real. There is a formulator, a pharmaceutical company that is using micronized material. And they take 10 kilograms of API and they blend it with 2,000 uh, liter bean with 1,000 1, kilograms of uh, excipients. So it means that we have 1% of API in the mix. All the other part, uh, um, components are cellulose, lactose, they're well flowing. Uh, so it's 1% mix. So it means that the dose is not that high. And then they do this homogeneity test, and this is an FDA uh, procedure for um, um, doing a, a homogeneity test. They do it in the in the silo, in the hopper, in the bin. It's called the bin pharmaceuticals. Uh, they use this bin before. This bin will be blended, and then they feed it to the tableting machine or capsule filling machine. And the common way to sample it is to take 10 samples uh, in uh, different uh, ways, uh, different places and different depths. They usually use like a sampling teeth. Uh, and they, if it's a capsule, they will take every uh, sample will be more or less in the size of a capsule. And they check the content uniformity, they check. Uh, mm -hmm. So they take already 10 samples. Five million, let's say five milliliter each, which is quite big, all over together 50 milliliters. And they're quite uniform. All the samples are uniform, but the assay in all of them are low. It means that they're uniform, but the assay, instead of having 1% um, of active, we have only 0 0.8 and 0 0.9. All of the samples have low assay, but they are very uniform, they're all the same. And the formulator doesn't understand what happened. They think, okay, maybe uh, the myconized material was out of assay. Maybe we have a chemical problem. And uh, maybe it was, I don't know, blown away from a, a dust or cloud. What's going on here? And that's very um, embarrassing because on one hand, the material is uniform, but it's not correct uniform. It's all of it. It's not good enough. Um, 0 0.8 or 0 0.9% is, um, is falling out of specs. So the big question is, where did we lose 0.1% of the material, which is accounts for one kilogram of active. Where did it go? Um, and the first time I had um, a complaint like this from a pharmaceutical client, they told me that something is wrong with the material. Okay, they said the blending process is perfect because the material is uniform, but the material is not good because it is being damaged. They thought it's being damaged in the, in the blending. So we started sketching an error and trying to understand what's going on here. So first of all, it's not a degradation, it's not analytical, it's not other issue. It is an issue of homogenization, but not in the way you would imagine. And let's try to understand what's going on here. The one kilogram of uh, API that is missing by volume, it's between two and 10 liters. Okay, it depends on the bulk density. Let's say it's like two liters. It means that two liters is only 0.1% of the bin volume, okay? It's a very small place in that, in this volume, if we have this one kilogram hiding somewhere, it takes very little space. And the entire sampling program, this 50 milliliters, is 0.03% of the bin volume, which means that actually our samples are not that representative, okay? Uh, do you know this uh, game submarines that, uh, where you have a drawing of submarines on a on um, paper and you try to guess where the enemy submarine are. This is exactly what we are doing here. We're trying to find the one kilogram that accounts for the missing uh, uh, content uniformity, but it's very difficult to find it. Statistically, I would take between 200 to 1000 samples to hit this lamp, statistically, okay? Because uh, it is hidden so well in the, in the powder. And this is why uh, it's missing. All the material is uniform, but since micronized material especially is tending to aggregate, it's very li likely that we have somewhere a lump of micronized material that was not mixing well, and it kind of stabilized itself with, uh, let's say, lactose around it, and it's sitting there. And it contains all the missing uh, material. 
And if, it, if we have a whole one kilogram there of this missing material, the chances we'll see it in, for, in formulation is not high, but the, the rest of the material will be fairly uh, uniform. Now, this is one way it could get, uh, it's hiding as a one big lump. Uh, do you, this is a more common way we have aggregates or agglomerates or, or lumps of the micronized material because we didn't mix it well. So it's hiding like that. And again, the statistic is the same. The chances of getting any one of these are very low. And most likely, a very common issue is that the micronized material lacks the wall of the vessel and goes to the wall. It finds its well on the wall. It's stabilized there as a, as a one chunk or few or a layer of aggregates and we will not find it in the sample. So um, this is quite a, a tricky way to assess, and this is very typical to our clients when they are trying to micronize, uh, to formulate uh, pool flowing, aggregating, and, and uh, micronized yeah. powders. Now we'll talk about how to blend micronized material. Um, we want either to blend the material ourselves or to advise to our clients how to blend them. And how do we blend micronized material that again tends to create these agglomerates and uh, how to avoid it from happening? Because you have to remember that done, once we have a, an agglomerate or lump of micronized material, it's being coated with the laxos or cellulose, whatever we are, and it stabilizes this lump. It's like creating a cookie full uh, mixed with powder. So we want to avoid that or, at least, or maybe use it for ad advantages. For that, we have to understand the blending mechanisms. In any blending process, we have uh, three main mechanisms. One of them is diffusion, which is random uh, movement of single particles when the powder is moving. Uh, of course, it will not happen with uh, cohesive pool flowing or micronized material, uh, but it will happen with the rest, with all the laxos and, and cellulose that are in the powder. Usually, when we have these pharmaceutical blenders with rotating blend uh, beans, this is what they have there. They have like purely diffusion. The micronized material will not be handled well by this. Another mechanism is shear, which means that we are tumbling the powder and it shears along the way like we are uh, um, blending a deck of cards. Uh, that could be nice, but if the micronized lap is stabilized already and it's coated by Excipients, it will not be sheared anymore. It will be, it will stay there, unless we have like a very strong chopper or something. And the last thing is the convection, which means moving the power portion of powders throughout the bulk. Let's say with uh, with a kind of um, mechanical uh, agitator. This will be efficient if we uh, succeed to move the micronized particles away from each other. Okay. So in order to micronize, uh, to blend micronized material, we use the mechanism of what we call heterogeneous mixture. And what is it? A homogeneous mixture is this. You see, I have, I'm mixing blue and light blue and dark blue particles, and this is a uniform mixture. You see here that they are well uniform. This is a heterogeneous mixture. We have aggregates of the blue uh, material, but is, these aggregates are uniformly uh, uh, distributed, and it means that I can have a non-uniform uh, part of the powder, but it repeats uniformly. So, for example, imagine that each, each one of these uh, uh, dark blue particles are actually particles of lactose coated with the API. So the lactose coated with the API is not uniform, but we have them spread evenly throughout the, um, the bin. So one way of doing it, this is uh, that will uh, let the micronized material coat larger particles, for example, lactose. By the way, this is something that um, also is doing the reverse way. In many, many uh, companies that are doing control release uh, formulations, they want to coat it with a polymer. So what we do, they do, they took, take a grain of uh, sugar, coat it with the micronized material, and then coat it with a polymer. And this is why they want it to be micronized because small particles are there very nicely to large particles. So let's say we have lactose in the system. What we will do, we'll take a small amount of lactose, not everything that is inside the blend, and mix it with the, uh, let's say it's 100 microns, it's a good size, and we'll mix it with the API in a very, very small uh, blender and very aggressive blender, like a high shear mixer or something like this. It's not the entire 
volume, it's only a small volume, so it's easier to handle in a, in a special blender. And then what will you, will create this heterogeneous uh, mixture where we have the micronized material coating the lactose. And then we can take this and throw it into the blender and then mix it well. And now these repeating units will not aggregate anymore. They will be distributed evenly inside the mixer because the lactose is well flowing. Um, so this is one way to, uh, and, and I have applied this several times with uh, clients who had problems in mixing and formulating micronized material, and it works very nicely. Uh, another way to do it is simply to add the micronized material in very small portion into the tumbling blender every time to, to, to add a little bit of micronized material, and then we are making sure that it will not aggregate in large quantities. 